Hey, Zeb. Hey, Gil. Hey. Okay, we're just going to wait for others. You know. mm -hmm. Four minutes. No. Uh, yes. Uh, it's not in full screen mode. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Cool. Hello. Oh, you share? So my share is enabled or disabled actually. Yeah, mine too. Hey guys, yeah. do you want me to stop just to see that you can share? Yes, please. Oh, you can go ahead. Can you? Yeah, we can do it. Perfect. Okay. So let's go back to, yeah. Let me check if I can do it. You want to check? All right. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. All right, I see some more people joining. Uh, we'll start in one or two minutes, so just bear with us. Okay, um, all right. See that more people are joining. Uh, yeah, let's give it one more minute and then we will start. Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Gil Cohen and uh, I'm an Open Legacy General Manager in EMEA. Um, and we are excited about being here. I mean, this is our third time in the API days. Always uh, interesting to talk to people that really understand what we do and, uh, and leave the API world just like we are. 
Uh, today we have here on the session together with us also a guest from uh, our new partner, uh, Nacho uh, from, um, from RPG and Google. So Nacho, maybe I'll let you introduce yourself and then we'll go to the Open Legacy colleague. Sure, thank you very much. Uh, hi, my name is Nacho. I'm a customer engineer for Google Cloud RPG and the business application platform on Google Cloud. I cover the territories of uh, Iberia and uh, I um, have some cross-functional uh, jobs regarding uh, uh, around me as well. Basically, I help customers to uh, start with uh, the API uh, strategy, the API strategy from the technical point of view and help achieving their business goals. Excellent. Thanks, Nacho, and thanks for joining us. Uh, we also have Zev, our Chief Product Officer. So Zev, if you can introduce yourself. Sure. Hey, everybody. Zev Abidan. I'm Chief Product Officer for Open Legacy. Um, I'm doing IT and really uh, enterprise integration and legacy integration for the last 25 years. Uh, coming from the legacy background, but uh, you know now connecting with whatever is, is new and exciting. And of course, today, it's, it's all about the APIs. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And Ori? Yes, I'm Ori, and I'm leading our customer success and pre-sales across the region. Perfect. Okay, excellent. So, uh, so we're going to start the session. We really, this is the introduction, what you see, uh, the, the agenda, what you see on the screen. We want to make sure that we really keep it interactive. Uh, it's really exciting to, to, as I said, to have people that really understand uh, what we're doing, understand the potential of APIs, how it can actually help uh, our clients and partners. Um, so the way we structure this session, it's a 15-minute session. And we will try to leave enough time for questions and, and answers and, and some open discussion. But I, I did ask um, both Nacho and Zef to come up with the some of the new challenges that they see, especially during such a challenging year, 2020, with the COVID and uh, with, with the amount of new technologies that we see, and what are the challenges that they see, each one of them, in the interaction with, uh, with different clients and partners. Then we will also, as part of this new partnership, we want to sh show how exactly Open Legacy and RPG are working together. So we will do a live demo that will show the full development life cycle all the way from a legacy solution. We will use a mainframe up, and, up until uh, RPG. That will be a live demo. And after that, we will open it up for discussion, comments, questions, and so on. You can definitely, um, you can definitely have some, some of the questions in the chat. I already see that some of them are written. I will try to make sure that we address all of them, but if not, uh, we will leave the email addresses. It's also very easy to contact us. There is the contact uh, information available, and we will uh, be happy to take it also offline, both for Nacho, for RPG, and also uh, for Open Legacy. Okay? So I'm just going to go. So one of the things that uh, I think, and I, I managed to attend a couple of the sessions, everybody's talking here about APIs and the potential of APIs. One of the things that we really wanted to cover, and this is why we are so excited about the, the partnership with RPG, is to actually look at it, at the, at the overall digital value chain, and not just look at it from a legacy point of view, which is something that we are very comfortable and, and doing on a daily basis, but also look at it from the end user side, and what actually the developers need, okay? So if you look at the overall value chain, this is how we actually, together with RPG, cover it. So with Open Legacy, we enable basically customers to generate digital services from very complex legacy solutions. We have experience working with mainframe, AS400, the Oracle, SAP, a lot of complexity on the backend system and being able to generate standard, easy-to-use APIs in a very fast way. And together with RPG, we can monitor, manage the, the, the APIs and make sure that the user will really have, a, and the developers will have the experience that they need. 
So this is really kind of end to end. In a, after the first part of the session, we will show how all of this is actually working in uh, in reality. So before going into the demo, one of the things that I said in the introduction, I would like to actually hear from. Uh, we want to keep it as very interactive and open discussion. So I, I would like to start with Nacho and ask you. What are some of the new challenges that you see? And if you can be even either give some example or more specific about what do you see with the last interaction with your client? What are the important things? Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Gil. So um, uh, as, as you know, uh, part of my role is to uh, talk to many customers about their challenges and how do they uh, embrace, embrace this uh, digital economy. Uh, with APIs, and uh, what I found out uh, in different verticals, not only on the banking industry, uh, but uh, but specifically for the banking industry, actually, but uh, um, in many other uh, areas, is that the first uh, thing, the first challenge that I see in the market is that the velocity of uh, ecosystem activities will accelerate very, very quickly. That means that um, APIs is not just uh, Piece of technology anymore. It will be. It won't be just exposing some services. It will be about uh, offering digital uh, products. And companies that uh, that want to embrace that uh, that change need to start treating APIs as products. This is something that is uh, uh, on the core of RPG uh, itself. And companies that do, they will need to. Uh, uh, elaborate market plans for these products. They will have to uh, embrace marketing for these uh, API products and uh, for the developer engagement. Because the key difference here is that developer is no longer just uh, someone that you provide a service directly uh, uh, as a project. Uh, is uh, your developer should be treated as your customers, and that is one of the key challenges that I see. Uh, putting that in the mind of the or in the mindset of the people, and then companies should be. Um, the first thing they need to do, because these ecosystems will uh, activities will uh, accelerate, means basically that m more and more companies will embrace these new ecosystems, either creating ones or uh, or just joining some others. And what companies should aim to is to gather as many at the, at least to be at the early stage of this uh, phase is to uh, gather as many developers as possible in the first part. Then uh, should iterate faster the APIs so they can. Uh, um, take this, uh, these uh, developers as part of this baseline, uh, um, uh, find out uh, how, how can they, how can they uh, identify the potential uh, revenue makers of these uh, of these uh, developers and which ones are just there for to test the, 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 the ecosystems and so on. And um, digital products will uh, rise among every single company. That's, that's, that's for sure. But, uh, be it won't be a matter of having or not an ecosystem or joining an ecosystem platform it will be more about how fast can you cope that market within that vertical in this case banking uh um, within that ecosystem uh that is one of the first uh, things that i see um, our customers challenging as as i talk to them every day the next one is of course uh, uh and i think this has been said many times in different sessions to, today uh, but uh, companies will need to transform the way they operate radically to succeed in this area. And I think we all agree on that. Uh, I, I like the approach that one of my colleagues that did a, a presentation before called Paul Rohan. He used to say uh, that, that there, there are three, three laws that uh, bring us opportunity and also challenge. Uh, the first one is Moore law. So the, uh, we all know that, uh, that the speed of how, uh, how technology uh, is transforming is transforming every two years is making technology cheaper and also it's making it uh, going faster. So that's an opportunity. Uh, the Metcalfe's law says that uh, the network effects uh, only happen uh, and is proportional to the square of the number of connected users. Means that as ecosystem grow, as ecosystem grow uh, uh, by the number of users, the, the actual value will uh, uh, increase exponentially. So that's another opportunity. But then again, we have the Conway uh, law that says that organizations uh, design their systems based out of the uh, structure. So if we have a high, um, highly coupled um, uh, organization or a hierarchy 
uh, uh, super hierarchical uh, uh, organization, we will end up having a communication structure that mimics exactly that. So that's why companies need to reshape how they uh, operate, how they are organized in order to succeed, succeed in this uh, uh, ecosystem uh, uh, idea. And there are just a couple of points here. What that I see a lot of customers doing right now, uh, customers are, are thinking about what is a PM, what is a PO, what is a developer advocate, what are those, those roles for that company? Uh, for me, uh, in my point of view, what they need to do is they need to iterate on those roles. They have to embrace those roles fast and then iterate on those roles because they're not going to get it uh, right at the first time. They will iterate and, and move along the way because, to be honest, this role will change in the future as well. Um, again, API should be productized uh, with an API and design first approach as a standard that also uh, fits their needs. It's not uh, a mandate that they, that they need to follow. They need to uh, uh, adjust this API first and design first approach to their exact uh, uh, structure. And of course, as always, uh, project versus uh, product nuances has to be considered. Uh, a project way of developing APIs has an end date and then goes to an operational uh, or, or maintenance mode. While if you embrace the API as products approach, you will have to continuously iterate on those uh, API products and measure those API products. Finally, the third um, thing that I see uh, from my customers a lot is that the IT footprint on a company won't change in a single day. And that is also uh, in relation with Open Legacy. That's one of the reasons I'm here with Open Legacy. That means that um, even if you try to migrate from your old legacy systems or you want to pull, uh, apply the Strangler pattern uh, or on, on these uh, legacy systems to move workloads outside of it, uh, they will be there for a couple of years, if, no, if not forever. And that means that there has to be some coexistence between modern architectures with microservices and legacy systems. That doesn't mean that you should uh, prevent um, that modernization to happen to those legacy systems. And that means that data is needed for this ecosystem, uh, uh, an ecosystem uh, uh, schema that we're trying to, to uh, implement means that companies companies need to generate these digital experiences relying on the legacy system. And that's why APIs are so important there. Uh, for that, just a, a, a thought on the architectural type, there is, a, the, there is the, 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 the facade pattern of an API, which means that you put a contract between your uh, consumers of APIs and the rest of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, and your API. And that is actually a pattern that will help you leverage different architectural models behind the scenes without reflecting complexity. And that is, uh, for me, the three challenges that I see uh, that our, my customers are embracing day, day to day. Thank you, Nacho. I mean, uh, I think it's, it's, it's very something that we very much can relate to. And this is why we really see the, you know, when we're talking to clients together, it's really kind of matching that the, the whole story flows really perfectly because exactly we look at APIs at the end of the products and how we can actually leverage them. Uh, Zev, I, I want to ask you kind of the same question. What are some of the things, because we are looking at it more from a legacy point of view, but it's exactly the same challenge. So how do you see it? Sure, absolutely. So what we've seen, I think, especially this year, uh, 2020 with the COVID crisis, uh, really an acceleration uh, of, of the process. I mean, the innovation comes in waves. And usually it starts with the low hang, you know, lowest hanging fruits uh, and, you know, different industries move at different paces. Banking was really kind of the first to um, uh, to adopt a lot of those things. And, you know, they're more advanced on their journey. Insurance is definitely uh, coming into play uh, uh, more and more today in other industries. But uh, what we're seeing is that there's a huge acceleration and it, it's driven by a couple of things. Um, so just take a look at, at the old, you know, life insurance model, uh, where it's mostly around agents, you know, face-to-face -face communication. Um, these are policies that nobody's, you know, looking at for, you know, looking at them for years. All of a sudden, everybody's looking at their life insurance policies, and you can send agents, and you can have face-to-face -face conversation. So that entire business model now needs to change, and of course, change to digital. Uh, that 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 happens very very quickly, and I think what's always kind of interesting to see in the market is not 
you know, just the need for those changes to happen is the fact that some players actually do make those changes really quickly. And that means that for those who can move fast, those who can treat, uh, and essentially those go you know, to APIs, these are your digital products, who can actually treat them as products that they can develop and deploy very quickly, they have a huge advantage in the market. And so we're seeing a lot of that. We're seeing a lot of acceleration on that. Uh, we're seeing that organization that used to have legacy systems and they say, well, you know, we'll deal with the low-hanging fruit to begin with uh, and eventually we'll get to the core. Uh, now they realize, well, actually, we do have to deal with the core. So what does dealing with the core mean? Uh, does it have to be kind of a complete rewrite of the, co of the core? That might be a pretty, you know, long process. That might be four, five, sometimes we've seen seven and ten years. Uh, so what do you do in the meantime? So all of these patterns and, and strategies around dealing with legacy so that it is uh, not an anchor, but rather an engine for your innovation, taking you forward uh, and, and moving and eventually moving away maybe from the legacy, but initially taking advantage of it in terms of creating the new digital project. Uh, that's definitely a trend that we're seeing accelerating um, and, and we're seeing that kind of uh, across across the board. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Zev. And uh, maybe until I hand over the screen to um, to Ori to kick off the demo, maybe just really in a sentence, why from each one of you, why did you think we actually, the all open legacy and RPG is actually, what's the reason behind this partnership? And Ori, I'm going to stop uh, sharing so you can put uh, the demo. I think so that's maybe I'll start with yourself in a, in a short sentence. Yeah, sure. So um, for us, uh, what uh, in the short sentence, let's see. Okay. Uh, in um, From the uh, RPG perspective, uh, a, RPG is an, a, an API platform, a uh, full lifecycle API platform that focuses on APIs as products. And uh, the idea of APIs as products is using as many uh, resources you need from behind the scenes to deliver a unified, no complex uh, data consumable uh, API product. And we see a lot of potential in legacy, but uh, until now, extracting that data was uh, incredibly, difficult, incredibly difficult. And when we partnership together, we see we saw how easy it is to actually uh, uh, streamline information from the legacy to the actual API. I, I saw the potential and, and how our messages were aligned. And I think that is a benefit, and that's what uh, actually makes me so excited about this partnership. Excellent. Same here, or Dev, just from your point of view? Yeah, we were saying exactly the same, same, the same thing from the other side, right? I mean, so Open Legacy is all about creating and generating those uh, uh, APIs from those legacy systems. But then again, you know, what do you do with those APIs? How do you manage them? How do you kind of deal with them? And, and here we found a, a, you know, a partnership that with APG that's kind of uh, best in class in terms of, of, of dealing with those issues. So it, it's really about the end-to-end uh, -end uh, uh, cycle of it. It, it, it doesn't do you any good if you have a great man you know, API management tool and you don't have any APIs. And of course, it doesn't do you any good if you have APIs, but no way to you know, leverage and manage them. So I think the combination of the two really provide customers with kind of the end-to-end -end, uh, solution to really kind of uh, bring all of those digital products and, and capabilities to, to market uh, with those uh, uh, two, two plat platforms. Yeah. Perfect, guys. Thanks a lot. I mean, everybody can talk about how great the APIs, you know, we generate an API, but it's always, it's about, you know, and especially with this crowd, how it's really being done. So I will hand it over to Ori. Ori, you can share your screen and uh, we're going to run a live demo to show you how exactly it's being done. I think maybe Nacho is going to show and explain the scope of the demo. Oh, yeah. and sorry, sorry, sorry. It's actually, it's actually, I will, I will do this. Okay. Perfect. So, Nacho, go ahead. Sure, perfect. So, uh, I, I won't take too much time from you, Ori. Don't worry. Uh, so, we start with, with this. We start off with a portfolio of backend solutions. Uh, for example, in this use case, it's an IDM mainframe, which holds credit card information. We go to a CRM uh, a structure, which is Salesforce, which will be handle products and consumer and customers. And then we might have something like a more modern uh, 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 architecture with uh, Kubernetes, uh, that's what we call the custom loyalty program, which basically is just a, a, that, a custom loyalty program that we have created there. Can you go to the next slide? Okay, so how can we add, get uh, the uh, value of this data? So we thought about the perfect, yeah, please. Uh, 
we thought about the perfect developer journey. That means that a developer will have a loyalty app idea, will go into the developer portal, will research the API program that he's looking for, and then basically they just need to uh, build an app. No complexity here. So um, if we click again, we will have a, a simple and fast uh, and clear iterated way, uh, uh, automated and secure integration and secure experience end to end of the, the uh, digital value chains. They will have all the experience they need from a developer engagement from, uh, from the developer portal. And basically uh, with, we start with the data, but we are avoiding any kind of complexity behind the scenes. And we have to be able to measure impact and engagement of those, uh, of those uh, developers. And basically what we have to do is let the developers do our job, right? Which is uh, bring that uh, amazing uh, applications back, uh, up to life. And then from the point of view of the integration persona, which is the people in charge of creating that, those integrations, we in the past we saw a lot of, uh, of friction of creating those integrations that they might use, um, used to take you know, months to prepare. So what we thought about is we need to be a frictionless integration with no extra code on legacy. And that is super important because we don't want to extend the footprint of these legacy backends. And with all the uh, security requirements that uh, this kind of integration needs. And then we need to be uh, able to create in a reusable way and an automated process so we can align with our CICD uh, pro uh, process uh, uh, entirely. And the last slide is uh, super simple. What I want to talk, uh, it's that on the left side, we see the sources and the right side, we see the consumers. We connect the mainframe and pull that information to deploy it either in cloud functions or app engine, cloud one, GKE, or even in cloud uh, in APD uh, potentially uh, directly. And that is uh, critical information that is coming directly from the mainframe. Uh, and Open Legacy does the perfect job of extracting that. That's what Ori is going to show you. If we click next, um, we see then that we retrieve information from Salesforce, the user information, and we connect it to our APD as well. And finally, uh, uh, if we click again, this, uh, um, so if we click, uh, yeah, we see that we gather that uh, information from our loyalty program info. And what we try to do is to abstract all that complexity that we reflect on the left side and just provide a simple to consume API product that the developers can use. And with that, Ori. Thank Perfect. you, Nath. Thank you. Good. Let me share my screen. Great. So what we see here is, is the open legacy ID. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to take some COBOL code, some COBOL copy books, and I'm going to generate a Google function, Google Cloud function out of it. So I'm starting with creating an SDK. SDK, you should consider it as a an API building block. So it's actually a representation of um, legacy uh, presented as Java due to automation process. Okay. Ah, much better. Good. So uh, I'm going to name my uh, SDK. So it's going to be a mainframe SDK. And then I have to select uh, what kind of backend. In this case, it's going to be a mainframe CSES transaction server. There are some advanced options I'm going to ignore for now. Then I'm going to the next step. Next step, I have to put the IP and the connectivity information of the mainframe. So uh, we do it here, 86. Ori, we cannot hear you. For some reason, you're mute. Yeah. 
Ori? We cannot hear you. Ori, we cannot hear you. Ori, Ori, you are mute. We cannot hear you. Zev, maybe if you can just describe what uh, Ori did, because I, I think we have some, you know, sound issue with Ori. Yeah. So, uh, Ori, if you can just continue, I can describe what you, what you're doing. I think that uh, that might work. So. Um, so basically what we've done is we took an SDK, we've created an SDK, uh, and the SDK is basically an, uh, an integration component. Uh, that integration component uh, is uh, uh, basically, uh, is being uh, used to uh, describe a specific COBOL program on Kix. So that COBOL program is being parsed automatically, is being generated automatically, And what you can see here is basically uh, that it is now has a representation uh, of uh, of that uh, program inside the um, the Open Legacy IDE. Now these SDKs they can be used inside the API project. So as you can see, all the different fields um, from uh, from COBOL they are automatically generated as as um, Java data types. So it's already a Java um, Java process. So. The next stage is to actually create the API project out of that. And so basically uh, just choosing uh, Yeah, okay. So generating uh, the uh, the actual uh, API project, choosing the different SDKs that we want to use. And uh, yeah. So, Ori, I don't know if you're uh, able to regain voice. We can. Can you hear us? Oh, I think we've lost. Yes. So he's going to try to reconnect, but but maybe maybe um, Zev, just for the sake of time, if you can if you can just describe the process of how it's being done, and hopefully Ori is going to be back. Sure. So apologies for for that. We have a bit of a technical snag here. Uh, but yeah, but the, the what you saw is the Open Legacy IDE. That's an Eclipse based IDE. Basically, what it does, it takes copy books, you know, couple copy books or whatever the legacy asset underlying asset is. So it can be schemas, you know, store procedures. Uh, DB2, whatever that is, uh, and basically create those SDKs. Those are the co communication or integration uh, objects. Um, those are basically the entire integration stack within that one Java component. Those Java components are composable, so they're the building blocks for the APIs. Uh, and basically, what the next step for that is creating the API uh, uh, project out of it. So that can be a microservice, and it could be a function, basically consuming those SDKs. Um, as data stores almost. Um, so you have you know, just a normal microservice or a normal function that has a contract, which is an API contract, uh, uh, usually, of course, JSON REST. Um, it has the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the payload itself, you know, all the different cross-cutting concerns that you might want to add there, uh, analytics, security, telemetry, whatever that, that's applicable, you can bake it into that. Uh, and, and of course, those SDKs as data sources, all of that is automatically generated. So the end result is basically you have this API uh, that's ready to be uh, uh, deployed. So in this case, specifically, what we're doing is deploying it as a, as a, as a Google function. 
uh, for Apigee to use. And from that point on, I think, uh, not sure if you want to take it from there. Sure, I will. So thanks. Uh, although we, we can see the the, the Ori uh, uh, end of the demo, basically it ends with uh, with uh, uh, Ori creating a Google Cloud function, and then we will consume from APT. Uh, I just want to uh, reemphasize that uh, thanks to open to the openness of our Open Legacy, we can deploy that uh, not only in Google Cloud functions, which I just thought it was cool, so that's why we started with our Google Cloud functions, but we can deploy it on uh, both on-prem, any other Google Cloud services assets, such as App Engine or uh, TKE or uh, using Cloud Run, or even potentially we can even deploy uh, directly on Apity by using the uh, Java Cloud or JavaScript Cloud policies, because one of the benefits of uh, of, uh, of, uh, Google, of uh, Open Legacy is that we can integrate directly with uh, with this kind of uh, uh, architectures. So by using, for example, uh, a Java uh, Java Cloud, we can directly integrate the SDK into uh, RPG and make RPG all the connectivity with our Open Legacy. But in this case, what we did is we used a, a Google Cloud uh, function by using the extensions of RPG, for, for example, by going to create a new extension and uh, using the Google Cloud function, what we did is we created a Google Cloud function here, uh, extension that is called cards, as you can see um, in here, Google Cards uh, uh, function. So the next step is uh, to create an API proxy, uh, an API specification such as this one, okay, where we see the uh, loyalty app uh, recommendation. As you remember from, from the last uh, uh, architectural uh, going through, we are going to use uh, the mainframe using Open Legacy, Salesforce, and GK into our project. So I'm going to do a simple demo uh, where we uh, start the tracing, uh, famous tracing option from our RPG, and I'm going to use Postman to uh, just call the uh, recommendation uh, API product. As you can see here on, uh, on my uh, my API test, uh, the the call is simply loyalty recommendation. The ID of the of the consumer and then uh, an API key. Super simple. But behind but behind the scenes, what we're doing is uh, uh, is a lot. We are uh, in, uh, securizing this API with API uh, keys. Of course, we can uh, put uh, different layers of uh, security. We are um, holding spike arrest and as well as quotas. And we are uh, using JavaScript to transform some of the uh, to enter some logic here. And then we call a chef flow, which actually calls our extension APIs, so you can see here the actual information coming from the uh, from the legacy mainframe. So what we do next is we use that information uh, by summing the points. As you can see on each of, car of the cards, we have some uh, card uh, usage. Okay, we treat them as points, and with that, what we do is use those points to call our uh, service uh, uh, on GKE. Uh, to uh, giving them the, the actual uh, amount of points, and it will give us a recommendation product, as you can see here. The whole idea is here is to, for them to see some, for the developer to see something like this. If we go to the custom uh, uh, completely uh, integrated portal for Apigee, we go to uh, mock, of course, mock uh, uh, API portal that we have created here. And if we go to the APIs, we can see the whole uh, documentation of this uh, API, which is super simple. It's just get the products and get the recommendation uh, for a specific user ID, okay? Uh, the idea is that behind the scenes, we are pulling information. For example, if we go to get products, I'm getting the product, uh, one specific product that is uh, Salesforce. Uh, and because of that uh, uh, integration with extensions, we're getting information from Salesforce, we're getting information from mainframe, and we're getting information from modern uh, architectural uh, reference and join them together to an API product that is just giving us a recommendation. That is the kind of complexity we want to abstract from the people. Of course, this has been super reinforced from a lot of our multiple sources to one single line. Uh, this is the purpose of the demo. But you can uh, think about many use cases that you might have in your company that you want to leverage information from legacy, uh, but you want to avoid complexity and integration with open legacy. So uh, in a couple of uh, minutes uh, or hours, you can start pulling information from legacy and start building API products from, uh, from, uh, from scratch. Perfect. Thank That's you, Nacho.
Excellent. Uh, so, so again, the whole end-to-end -end demo typically is something that doesn't take more than uh, five to ten minutes to show how we generate an API from the, the, the mainframe AS400, any type of uh, complex legacy solution. I would open it now for some questions. Um, there, was, there is one question. Uh, guys, feel free to either ask it. Uh, I, you can, uh, I will open it up so you can actually um, speak up or write it down. There are a couple of questions, but uh, there is one question I, I think, Nacho, for you. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, sure. yeah. So Jens Jens Muller is uh, asking uh, that they have around a question from uh, switching from an old instrument's backend to APT, but with an additional uh, mules of uh, mules of API uh, layer. So, well, of course, this is a super broad topic: how to do migrations. But basically, what I've seen in patterns for, from customers is that uh, they they follow uh, three steps. The first one is to put a facade of APG on all the API layers. So even though you might have different products, regardless if you want to migrate those or not, uh, uh, they put a facade on front of those uh, APIs without adding any latency. At the beginning, that facade of APG is as plain; it's just a proxy uh, to to root request to the to the to app, from APG to the uh, old backends, and then when they have a new uh, uh, backend that they want to leverage, what they can do is they can move uh, traffic uh, slowly and gradually to the new backends. Uh, for example, uh, today in this same session, there was a, a legacy app modernization uh, workshop uh, that was delivered by one, one of my colleagues, Mike Anau, that was doing that exactly on a real time scenario, of course. It, it, it is not um, uh, uh, using um, or it's not. Um, uh, it's not a demo around legacy backends such as mainframes, but it's more about a swap service transforming a swap service to a marketer uh, REST API. And that is basically the same pattern we use here. Perfect. Um, all right, I see Jens is, is continuing the question. Do you have experience having a um, mule stopped APIs and RPG as management API layer on top? Yes, we've seen it. Uh, uh, it, it depends on what it's your you you worry about. If you worry about uh, performance, that is not something we we should be uh, really uh, depending on the use case, of course. But uh, most of the time, it's not something that our customers are impacted for because APT performance is uh, is is pretty neat. And the the uh, the fact that we're actually uh, putting a piece in front of it that is almost a proxy and not uh, doing too much intense workloads is not adding any latency on top. What do we gain from actually putting APG on top of it? Well, we gain the, the whole analytics portfolio uh, that APG provides into the table. We provide the customer experience uh, uh, via the API developer portals and the whole uh, software life cycle uh, for, of APIs. And we uh, can start moving pieces from MuleSoft, for example, authentication. That, uh, and again, Jens, I'm just uh, guessing that you're migrating from MuleSoft. Maybe it's not exactly. The, the that but uh, we can move pieces from mules of up to the uh, uh, API APG layer uh, um, uh, in a slow pace. Mm -hmm. There is a, another question uh, that came uh, in the direct messages, but uh, just uh, you know, typically if you are not uh, an API architect, uh, the question is more: Who do we typically speak when we're talking about? The whole generation of the API in an in our organization. So, Zev, do you want to take it? Sure, absolutely. So, I mean, APIs really have two aspects to them. Uh, they have a, a business aspect and a technical aspect. And so, when it's very important when you're having some kind of discussion, not to put just in technical realm. Usually, we talk with uh, um, uh, you know a line of business on the digital side of of the house where. Those APIs or the projects are very much aligned with a specific um, um, specific business goals, uh, and both on, with them and the technical side. So it usually would be with the you know somebody from the CTO office and the the digital uh, uh, initiative uh, owner. Uh, I think what's very important to understand is that the big shift that happened, I think, in the last three four years, is that. People have started looking at APIs as really as products in, in terms of measuring them for value. So now you're asking not just 
Um, even if you are on the migration path, okay, so you know, let's just do rewrites and, and, and move everything. It's, it's really about what are my business goals? What is the value that I'm hoping to extract out of those uh, uh, APIs or integrations or whatnot? And, and, what's the, and only then ask the question of what's the best solution. And that's where you start to realize there are a lot of different strategies out there that can support these specific business goals that you might want to have, be it, you know, a full migration, be it, uh, you know, uh, uh, hollowing the core, as it's called, uh, or the straggler uh, uh, pattern or uh, uh, encapsulization. There are many, many different names and, and different strategies, um, move and improve, lift and shift, you know, different types. Uh, but really, they absolutely have to align with the business because the reality is if you are currently on a path to a large scale uh, digital project, and you're not going to see any benefits to the business in the next 12 to 18 months, probably somebody will try to pull the plug on the project or there will be some challenges with that. Uh, you need to show results very, very quickly in today's world. Uh, it's not just about having a cool technology project. It's about having a real deep impact on the business. Okay, perfect. And um, one, of, one of the questions that were raised in, in previous discussion, and, uh, and, and I think it can be relevant, you know, today, I mean, we hear a lot, of, a lot about great technology, great solutions, but if you were on the IT side, you know, how could you evaluate what is actually best for your organization? You know, what is, uh, you know, the whole approach of kind of test and learn? You know, is it something that really can be done when we're talking about middleware and integration? Maybe I will. I'll give it to Nacho. I don't know if uh, if this is something that you guys are experienced. Maybe. Uh, sorry, uh, I lost. I lost the sound for a second. I'm sorry. I don't know what is going on. Can you repeat the uh, so, in the short? Uh, yeah. So there, there. Maybe. Maybe. Did you hear the question? Yes. Yeah, so I'll start. And then I'm yeah. also, sorry. Uh, I mean, yeah. Um, so yeah, one of the things people don't really consider it. I mean, they have core systems and legacy systems and they have the new APIs and they want to really do kind of the iterative thing and, and you know, test and learn and mature them and, and really kind of be, be very agile. Problem is that that connective tissue between the old part of the business and the new part of the business really holds them down. So if they have, you know, old style ESB SOA type uh, uh, set up with a lot of middleware uh, where everything takes a lot of time and, you know, multiple stakeholders. And that's actually what we're seeing. We're seeing organizations struggling for six months or more to create a digital service from their mainframe. You know, and if you ask any one person on the, on the kind of the, the value chain, you know, how long have you been working? You know, two days here, maybe a week there. Uh, nobody's working for six months, but the different teams, the priorities, the handovers, what we call the, the negative space between the different stakeholders, that's where a lot of time gets lost. So if you really want to move to an agile kind of a way of working, you have to simplify, you have to delayer, and you really have to get into the mindset of what we call the API factory, uh, really create the capability to move very, very fast. Because one thing we know, it's not about how many APIs you can create. You know, uh, um, you, know you need a thousand APIs and you will create them uh, and then you will be done with it. It's really what's your capacity to create more as requests keep coming in because they do keep coming in. I want to add something, uh, Gil, here is, uh, 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 just reinforce the fact that uh, creating more APIs is not actually the the, the purpose of uh, of uh, of the business. Uh, what I see is exactly that pattern where we create thousands of APIs, hundreds of them are just replication one of each other, and and that basically uh, is is so is so in that complexity that we want to hide, right? If we see a catalog of APIs that we see customers V one. Uh, from SAP, uh, from SAP, or we are uh, looking at complexity, uh, showing exactly the same information, that is a reflection of ad hoc integration, which is something uh, we see, which is thinking about the backend and exposing instead of how do we want to consume that information. We have to focus on that, and that is so a key for the iteration. So if we think about the developer, what do they want to consume instead of how, how do we want to expose that is what I see. It's uh, it's going to drive that interaction uh, iteration on the product itself because you're going to get feedback, instant feedback from your developer, and that's something you have to uh, realize and find out how to how to get how how is better for your company to get that feedback and reinforce your API products by doing that, not generating new ones, but reinforce and recreating and iterating those products. Okay. 
exactly what I just said. I mean, if you if if looking at the APIs, you can understand what the IT infrastructure behind the scenes, then probably you're doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah. you know, they got to be simple and uh, and easy to understand. Um, just because we have the last kind of five minutes, um, if you guys have any other questions, just please write or or uh, jump in. Um, my last question from both from both of you, because we've heard so much uh, today and on a daily basis around the APIs, what is really the key differentiator or what are the things that people that are building their internal API factory needs to focus on? Is it really the speed? Is it more the architecture? Is it more understanding the business? You know, we hear so many different things, but what, from your point of view, is kind of like the killer app or the, the, the biggest differentiator? And um, Dev, maybe I'll start with you. So in a way, it's all aligned, right? I mean, if you start from the business goal, then probably you will need speed, and that will lead to a you know, simplified architecture. So the, it's the entire thing. But I would say it's it's the, the most successful implementations that we've saw uh, are really about a change in the mindset. Of, of kind of what we what I think what we're all circling around, which is treating your APIs as the product, as the main thing, as the thing that that you're deploying out there, the people you know people use it, um, and 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 not thinking about it in terms of technology, not thinking about it or not just in terms of technology, uh, or, or in terms of a one-off. This is now your business. This is now everybody's business. It's a digital business that, that and the digital world that we're in. So really. Uh, uh, creating the investing in the capabilities uh to move fast you know in an agile way in an automated way devops is really important uh and the tooling around that really investing in that that's that's ultimately that's an investment that we see uh, uh, uh people really kind of uh in, enjoy later on versus just thinking about it as okay this is a project that i need to be done with so that i have you know an api on top of what i was already doing uh so that's really the differentiator that mindset okay. yeah Adding to that, from your side? sure. Adding to that, I I hundred percent agree with you, uh, uh, with Seth. Uh, the one of the what, another thing that I would say is like focus on the business outcome, the first business outcome you want to achieve, uh, and that will drive your API strategy. If you focus on, on replacing technologies, if you are focusing on just uh, uh, um, embracing REST instead of uh, SOAP, but you are not focusing exactly on what is your business outcome. For example, I'll give you an example of a customer that I that I have. They want to. Uh, if this is a in this case, this is a retail uh, uh, company, but they want to uh, reduce the time that it took to make inventory from stores. Right? It it took uh, around a day on a manual process, on a batch process actually that could fail, potentially fail, and actually don't do inventory in the in the stores. So what they did is they embraced the API strategy to do that almost in real time. So that is a business outcome, and that's how we started the conversation. And that's how on Appity and on Open Legacy, we like to start a conversation. What do you want to accomplish? And then we help you, and we help you with uh, everything, meaning not only the API, but how can you present that as a business use case, a business case for your, for, for your executives to actually uh, uh, align with that strategy. And we can help you to, um, to uh, create the MVP for you to showcase the potential of APIs strategies. And then everything will follow after that because you will see that people uh, people will embrace that kind of a strategy and will start resolving faster. Perfect. Uh, Nacho, first of all, thanks a lot for joining us. I mean, it's always interesting to hear actually both sides and, and, and you know, an experience. And now we are starting to work together also uh, on actually making a difference to our clients. So it's very, very exciting partnership for us. And um, uh, from my point of view, I mean, I think it's really, I mean, the, the, the understanding what the business needs, the speed, the standardization, automate, automate as much as possible. These are the key things um, that we want to deliver. So Again, appreciate uh, your time. And uh, if there are any questions or any, if you need more information, here are the two address, uh, email addresses. Feel free to contact us. And we'll be able to share uh, more information. So thanks a lot and have a great day. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Bye-bye.